Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another one of my videos. In this video, I'd like to show you something that I came across while going through my storage unit. This is something that I made many years ago. And I made this for testing fuel injectors. I had a problem and I thought one of my fuel injectors may be leaking. So I needed a way to be able to test the fuel injector, not only to see if it's leaking, but to see if it's clogged, to see if it's operating properly, if the solenoid and the plunger are working properly. And that's why I designed what you see right here. It was very simple to make. It only cost me, I think, around $25. Very inexpensive. Now, in order to make this, what I had to do, the first thing, let me unscrew this. All right. Inside here, there was a valve core, a Schrader valve, just like you see here. This valve right here is designed to release pressure from inside the cylinder if it gets too high. This little pin on the Schrader valve pushes outward and it allows pressure to escape. This one here, you push in to let the pressure out. Now this was threaded with the Schrader valve. So using a valve core removal tool, I unscrewed it. Once that was done, there is gas left inside the cylinder. So I didn't want to drill this and create sparks with gas inside still. So what I did is I put water inside this cylinder, filled it about this high, right around here. And once that was done, I drilled out the opening so it's about three-eighths of an inch in diameter. And by doing that, I could pour fuel injector cleaner or carburetor cleaner inside the cylinder about halfway. You're going to leave this part up here empty. That's going to be pressurized, 50 PSI of air pressure, allowing the cleaner to go through all the tubing here, through the ball valve, and out the nozzle. Once that hole was completed, I left the water inside. And then I put my finger over the hole, turned it this way, and then I drilled a half inch hole right over here, straight into the cylinder, and then I drained everything out, including the shavings, I rinsed it a few times, and it was all ready to go to connect up everything you see here. I then took a fitting like you see right over here, it's a 3 8 inch barb by quarter inch male pipe thread fitting and I inserted it into the cylinder, but first I scraped away all the paint on the cylinder because when I go to braze this, it has to be perfectly clean. Now, if you're not familiar with brazing or the materials that I use, definitely going to want to check out the video up here, circle with the eye, and you'll also see a link posted at the end of this video showing exactly how it's done. It's very simple. Once that was put in place, I then sprayed the entire can and it was ready to go. Now over here, what I did is I drilled a hole inside this brass cap. The hole had to be big enough to accommodate this portion right here of this tire valve. Picked this up at Walmart. So you want to make sure it's a little smaller than the diameter right here. And you shove it in this way and you pull it until it pops into position. And you're going to use that to pressurize the entire cylinder once it's screwed on top. Now, the fitting here, the threads I should say, are a little more coarse than what's on here. Luckily, it does thread on at least a full turn. And in order to make this seat nice and tight on this top rim, I added one flat rubber washer and applied a little bit of silicone grease, as you can see right there. When you put it on top, all right, Look at that, going on nice. And I just tighten it down with the wrench. It seals perfectly. You don't have to worry about it blowing off. Now to finish down here what I did, you don't have to do this exactly as I did. There's gonna be one change you can make here. But I did it this way because you need to have room for this valve to open and close. You could turn it the other way if you want, but I wanted this to have the room because if I put a nipple, quarter inch nipple that goes into the cylinder, leave the quarter inch male pipe sticking out, took this valve and threaded it on right here, the handle would hit the cylinder. So what I did is I had a bunch of parts laying around, which were all quarter inch male pipe by 3 8 inch barb, 
So that's exactly what I did here. Used one on this side, and I used a quarter inch male pipe by 3 8 barb on this side. Joined it together with a braided vinyl hose, which is 3 8 The ball valve I picked up at Harbor Freight, very cheap. I think it was $3.50. This side of the ball valve is also quarter inch male pipe. I did not have a quarter inch female pipe thread, which would go over these threads right here with the 3 8 barb sticking out. So I just coupled everything together using this fitting in the middle. I wanted to add stability to the center, so I just bent this piece of aluminum, put a rubber pad, and I nylon tied it on. On the very end, right here, hose clamp onto the barbed connector, and right here, this goes onto the fuel injector. Let me take this off and show you. Very easy to swap out the fuel injectors you want to test, or you can flip it around if you want to back flush it. Let's just pull that off. All right, let's pull that off right here. And over here, you would normally see an O-ring. This part goes into your fuel supply rail right here. And on the bottom, there'll be another O-ring with possibly a hard piece of plastic on the end. That's what it's going to look like. And over here, this is a closer look at this nozzle. You can see a better picture right over here. You definitely want the valve because it allows you to swap out different injectors without having to depressurize the cylinder every time you do it. Okay, so this would go right back on, very easy. And if your injector size is different on the end, just put an adapter right here to change the hose to the size that you need. Now if you'd like to check the windings of the solenoid and you don't have a setup like this, it's very easy. You would just take a resistance measurement between the two pins you see right here. And a typical reading, because these do draw a fair amount of current, is going to be between 12 and 20 ohms. The good thing about this setup is that if I don't want to use this for fuel injectors, I could take this clamp off right here, connect up a small vinyl hose, maybe one from like a kitchen faucet with a spray nozzle, put a liquid inside here, pressurize it, and have a nice portable spray unit. Fuel injectors are normally triggered by the computer using pulses. Longer pulses will supply more fuel to the engine, and shorter pulses will supply less fuel. To do the test I'm about to show you, we don't have to do that. I do have a video on my channel which shows how to make a PWM circuit, or a pulse width modulation circuit, that you can drive this with. But we're only going to be taking this little setup I made here using two alligator clips or jumper wires. This would go back in here. All right. Of course, the clamp would be tightened. This would go there. This would go here. Make sure they don't touch each other. And this goes to either your power supply unit or your car battery to test. Once it's connected, you then open up the valve. Make sure there's no gas leaking out. If there isn't, that's great. You don't have a leaky injector. And then you can click this on and off to see how the injector fires and what the spray looks like. Okay, let me give you a quick demonstration. Okay, to demonstrate, I'll be using my power supply unit set for 12.65 volts which is the same voltage as a fully charged lead-acid battery. Inside the cylinder, I'm not going to be using carburetor cleaner or fuel injector cleaner. It's kind of expensive. I'd rather not waste it. So I used rubbing alcohol, 70%. Once I poured the rubbing alcohol inside, I tightened this back, and then I made sure 50 PSI of pressure was put inside the cylinder. This valve over here was in the off position, when it's straight, that means the liquid can flow across. When it's perpendicular, that means it's closed. So when I went to pressurize this with the air, I made sure the valve was in the off position. This way nothing leaks out, and it also allows me to take this clamp off and swap out the fuel injectors as needed. Now there are many types of fuel injectors. Each one has a different pattern that is sprayed out. What's important 
is that the fuel is highly atomized. The smaller those droplets are, there's going to be more surface area of the fuel in contact with the oxygen in the air, allowing for the best combustion inside the cylinder. If you're unsure what the fuel injector pattern should look like, there are diagrams online showing what each type of fuel injector spray pattern should look like. Or, what I usually do is I pull out all the fuel injectors, I test each one to see how they spray out, and if the fuel injectors all have a similar spray pattern, then normally that would be considered a good fuel injector. But if you notice a few of them are different, and one has more of an atomized spray, and other ones shoot out more in streams, then you're going to know the ones that shoot out in a stream are more than likely clogged, and they're going to need to be cleaned. I place this piece of tar paper right here so it's easier to see when the fuel shoots out the nozzle. For testing purposes, all that's needed is a simple momentary switch. Okay, the fuel injector has the O-rings removed. I slid this inside the 3 8 inch vinyl reinforced tube, tighten the clamp, open the valve, and now I'm going to push this button right here and you'll see the fuel squirt out. If you notice that some fuel was flowing out of the end of the nozzle, before you push the button, that would indicate a leaky fuel injector. And sometimes you can correct those by using the carburetor cleaner or fuel injector cleaner inside the cylinder. And you could flip this around, supply power. You could back flush it and keep flipping it. Usually that works very well. I mean, it might not be 100%, but I did have a couple in the past that were stuck open and eventually it cleared whatever blockage was in there between the plunger and the nozzle allowing it to finally seal. You could try that but if that doesn't work the only other thing that you can do is take the fuel injector out and place it in an ultrasonic bath for about 15-20 minutes make sure it's just below the connector of the liquid all the way to the end and of course you're going to be cycling this on and off using either your hand or a PWM, Pulse Width Modulation Drive Circuit. Now the next thing I want to do is position the camera looking straight down at this nozzle. You now have a better view looking right at the nozzle. Let me push it again. Alright, now as you can see, the cone is coming out nice and symmetrical. So the angle of the cone from here to the right and from the other side going outward looks good. The only thing with this fuel injector, you notice the middle is lacking a fuel spray. It's only two jets shooting out. Let's see here again. You can see each one of those jets there, there, and there. And there should be more in the center. But I'm not too sure with this particular fuel injector because in order to tell if that's the right pattern for this one, I would have to compare it to all the other ones in the engine to see if they flow exactly the same. So as you can see, it's very simple testing fuel injectors using this setup. You could easily rule out a leaking fuel injector, a fuel injector that's not opening, allowing the fuel to flow out, and you could also take a look at the pattern coming out of the nozzle to determine if that fuel injector needs to be cleaned. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.